Once upon a time in a small village called Ukam, there lived a king called Musa. He was a chronic womanizer who was infatuated with beautiful women, despite having 50 wives. King Musa's personality was known by all his subjects and the neighboring villages. So, everyone would always hide their daughters and wives whenever they heard King Musa was taking a stroll around the village. Because whenever King Musa lay eyes on any woman, he would forcefully marry her and recompense her family or husband handsomely. King Musa didn't care whether the woman was married or not. All he thought about was her beauty. Once he expressed interest in a woman, she had to either accept to be his wife or lose her life. One day, King Musa returned from a stroll around the village and discovered one of his many wives with a guard, making love inside his hut. This made him extremely angry and bitter. He arrested the guard and convened a general village meeting at the market square the following day. Everyone attended the gathering, except the women who were considered beautiful, out of fear of being forced into marriage by King Musa. When they had all gathered in the market square, King Musa arrived with the village's spiritualist and the guard he discovered with his wife. King Musa decapitated the guard in front of the entire community as a warning to anyone who entertained the idea of sleeping with any of his wives. Then King Musa instructed the village spiritualist to cast a curse on the Ukam village. This curse required any woman married to a man from Ukam village to remain faithful till death. If a married woman cheated on her husband, she would transform into an animal. The men of the Ukam village were overjoyed about the new development. This meant that the king could no longer force a married woman to become his wife. After the curse was cast on Ukam village by the village spiritualists, the biggest amount of marriages was recorded in the days that followed. All the beautiful women hurriedly accepted any man who came for their hand in marriage, so as to avoid being forced to marry the king. And ever since the curse was invoked, no incidents of infidelity have been recorded in the Ukam village. Twenty years later, the village had grown dramatically and King Musa had passed away. They had a new king who genuinely cared about the villagers and was determined to bring growth to Ukam. The curse imposed by King Musa still existed, but the younger generations were unaware. In this new era, there lived a young, beautiful maiden by the name of Amaka. She was so beautiful and radiant that all the men in Ukam village wanted her as a bride. But she refused to accept any of them because she desired a wealthy man who could afford her most expensive jewelry and apparel. She had a childhood friend called Ada. Ada was equally attractive, but not as materialistic as Amaka. She would always advise Amaka to choose a man who was loving, caring, and compassionate. She implored Amaka that wealth is vanity and the personality is all that truly matters. Nevertheless, Amaka was stubborn, believing she was too beautiful to be the bride of an average man. One day, Amaka and Ada were on their way back from the stream when they met Ameka, a handsome and well-built man. He offered to help with their water pots, but Amaka bluntly refused. Ada, on the other hand, accepted his offer, and he assisted her with her pot of water. As they walked and talked, Ada learned that Ameka is a small-scale farmer with a small plot of land where he harvests crops. Ada admired Ameka's outspokenness and kindness, while Amaka disliked him because he was not wealthy. The following week, Amaka went to the market to purchase some items. There she met Chief Kanayo. Chief Kanayo noticed her and became interested. He approached her in the stall where she was. He promised her she could choose anything she wanted and he would pay. Amaka chose a variety of jewelry, beads, and outfits. Chief Kanayo paid for them all and told Amaka that he loved her and wanted to marry her. Amaka quickly accepted without thinking because she knew he was wealthy. Amaka and Ada chose the same day for their marriage ceremony. Ameka wasn't very rich, 
So he bought what he could afford for his wedding to Ada, while Chief Kanayo prepared a feast for Amaka. Amaka's wedding was the buzz of the town since there was plenty of food and drink for everyone. This was exactly what Amaka desired, so she was overjoyed. Ada was contented with what Amaka could afford, since she cared more about his personality than his money. However, Amaka met the shock of her life when she accompanied Chief Kanayo home after the ceremony and discovered that he already had five wives. Each wife had her own hut, and Chief Kanayo would visit each one on a specific day of the week. Amaka became enraged and began to yell at Chief Kanayo for concealing the fact that he had multiple wives. Chief Kanayo gave her a harsh slap on the cheek and warned her to keep silent. He informed Amaka that he had spent a lot of money on her own dowry and wedding arrangements. Thus, she belonged to him. Chief Kanayo then had a hut built for Amaka, where she lived alongside his other wives. But Ada was happy with Ameka. Ameka was deeply caring, loving, and compassionate. He didn't have much, but he loved and cherished Ada very much. He tried everything he could to keep her happy all the time. A few weeks after Amaka married Chief Kanayo, the other wives started treating her like a slave. She was the youngest of them all. Therefore, they often sent her on errands. Amaka had everything she desired and could afford, but she was constantly sad and melancholy. She recalled what her friend Ada had said, but it was too late. Chief Kanayo rarely spent time with her. He only made love with her once or twice a month. She was constantly alone and bored. One fateful day, Amaka went to the stream to get some water when she came across Ifanyi, a very gorgeous, cute, and muscular young hunter. She was on her way with a pot of water on her head when she noticed a snake slithering from the bush. In terror, she tossed the pot to the ground and shouted, Ifanyi had just finished hunting when he heard her wailing. He promptly ran to her aid and pursued the snake. After a few minutes, he returned to check on Amaka, who was still sitting on the floor in credulity. He assured Amaka he had killed the snake, but she was too afraid to move. So he held Amaka in his arms and carried her home. As she sat securely in his arms, her face resting on his chest, she began to feel drawn to Ifanyi. When they arrived at her house, Amaka offered to pay an excessive amount for all the bushmeat Ifanyi had caught that day. Ifanyi was ecstatic that Amaka paid twice the price of the bushmeat. Amaka begged Ifanyi to always bring her bushmeat whenever he caught any, not because she desired it, but because she had fallen in love with Ifanyi's physique and demeanor. She wanted to see him and be with him all the time because her husband hardly had any time for her. One day, she went to see her friend Ada and noticed how well she got along with Ameka. She noticed that Ada had gotten more attractive with time, but Amaka appeared older with her age since she was constantly miserable and depressed, despite having access to whatever she desired. She grumbled to Ada about her matrimonial house. Ada comforted her and told her to persevere. Ada told her it was a cross she had to carry. Amaka left Ada's house feeling hurt and depressed. She wished she had embraced Amaka when he approached the two of them. When Amaka reached home, she began crying. In that moment, Ifanyi the hunter brought some bushmeat for her. When he heard her crying, he went into the hut and attempted to calm her. Amaka grieved bitterly and opened up to Ifanyi. While she wailed, she kissed him, and Ifanyi kissed her too, and they made love. Ada complained of a stomach ache after they had finished making love. She begged Ifanyi to get her some water. Ifanyi promptly left the hut and fetched a cup of water. When he went back inside the hut, he couldn't find Amaka. All he saw were her clothes and jewelry. Ifanyi felt terrified and alerted the other women. 
When they entered her hut, they lifted her jewelry and clothing. To their utter surprise, they discovered a snail beneath her garments. The elders of the wives remembered the stories she had heard from her grandparents about the curse placed on Ukam village during the reign of King Musa. Nobody thought it to be true, but the fear of finding out kept every married woman in check. But now it was confirmed that truly the curse existed. When Chief Kanayo returned, he was informed of what had occurred. He brought Amaka, the snail, to the village's spiritualist, who stated there was nothing they could do. So, they put Amaka, the snail, inside a basket in the village square. Every morning, they fed her water and food. She remained there for the remainder of her life as a warning to other married ladies who intended to cheat on their husband. That's it for this story. I hope you really enjoyed. The important lesson that I picked up from this story is that whenever you choose wealth over compassion, just know that it's going to backfire. Wealth can be exhausted, but our personalities are made up of core values. They stay with us until our deaths. And in case of love, I think that it is better to remain single than to marry someone you don't love. Thank you very much for watching. But before the end, I have a question for you. From which country are you watching this video? Make sure to tell me in the comments. Till next time.